our dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We want to thank you for making this day a reality. In a very special way, we want to thank you for granting us the grace to be here at this time. We also want to thank you for Johnny Mercy's you granted us to be here. We especially want to thank you for our special guests who are here with us this morning. As we begin this exercise, we pray that you begin with us. We beseech you that every aspect of this exercise today will receive your divine blessings. We want to thank you because as we go on with this program, you are going to manifest your presence and your name will be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Declaration of Purpose. The Chancellor of Babok University, the President of Chancellor of Babok University, all other principal officers and associates who are present here this morning, the Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, have been represented by Deputy Provost. All other provosts, deans, heads of departments, professors, lecturers, staff, faculty members, all other academic leaders in this amphitheater. The 2023 Zycon Doctoral Holding Scholars who are here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Parents, sponsors, all in this hall for this occasion, I say welcome to the 12th holding ceremony of Bapok University. 
The grooming ceremony is similar to graduation ceremony in that faculty and doctoral students are dressed in full academic regalia and paraphernalia. During the ceremony, the name of a doctoral student is called a synthesis of his or her final dissertation is given and the candidate goes on stage with his or her supervisor for the wedding ceremony. The question is, is wedding ceremony important? The answer is yes. This is because here at Bakov University, the wedding ceremony is very, very essential and very important. It is indeed a special recognition that is organized just for doctoral degree candidates. During the ceremony, the faculty member, the supervisor, places the doctoral hood over the head of a doctoral graduate, signifying their success in completing all the requirements prescribed by the appropriate academic policy for that program. A question that frequently asks during Houdin is what is the difference between the Houdin ceremony and the convocation exercise? Friends who are here this morning, the Houdin ceremony is held at the end of each academic session. This event is different and separate from the graduation ceremony that will take place on Sunday, July 30, 2023, at the stadium of the university. In this wedding ceremony, doctoral candidates are celebrated and hooded by the supervising lecturers, professors, mentors, and provosts on this stage. In the commencement of a university, a ceremony for all graduate students. In commencement ceremonies, both undergraduates and postgraduates from each school are celebrated and officially graduated with their various degrees, provided they have met all the prescribed requirements. But the building is unique in that graduates are individually recognized at this event, which is currently held at the Theatre of Bakon University today. This event is presided over by the Bakon University Chancellor, President of Chancellor of the University, VP Professors, and the Provost College of Progressive Studies, and all advanced degree candidates who have completed all their degree requirements for the PhD are also welcome to attend. Friends, this morning here at Babcock, the wedding ceremony is for postgraduate doctoral students only and does not replace the commencement. The wedding of doctoral candidates just before the commencement is considered a very special exercise. This is because the wedding ceremony signifies the culmination of doctoral studies and, know this one, transition from candidate to colleague. Did you hear that? The ceremonial wedding of doctoral candidates recognizes their academic excellence and achievement and welcome them into the community of academic scholars. With the President of Manchester, sir, present in this amphitheater this morning are 164 doctoral candidates who have been taught, examined, groomed, prepared, and freshly minted for the 2023 
BU doctoral with exercise. They all have been certified by the College of Progressive Studies and the Office of Enrollment and Records, that is the BU Registry for Reading. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Please join me to invite to give his presidential address, Mr. President, Vice Chancellor, Professor Ademola Estan. The Chancellor and the Chair of the Board of Trustees of Babcock University, Professor Robert Jose Bonson. The Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Management Services, the University Bursa, Vice President for Student Development, other Associate Officers of the University, erudite professors and faculty, the President, former President of the Charter Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Your Royal Majesty, my Lord Temperance Spiritual, spouses of those to be good at today, parents and guardians, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure this morning to welcome you all to this historic and monumental event in the journey of our College of Postgraduate Studies. It gladdens me to come before our doctoral graduating students that will soon be hooded in the matter of moment from now. I wish to specially congratulate you on this landmark achievement. I am not in doubt that the other principal officers, provost, deans, and other faculty members, your relatives and loved ones present here today rejoice with you. I salute your courage in the midst of daunting challenges, just as the, such as the palpable fear of insecurity, economic crunch, and the demands of your ever busy schedule. You have endured all hurdles and challenges to emerge victorious. This explains why our joy over your success is indescribable. Dear Chancellor and distinguished personalities here present this morning and those watching us online, I'm glad to note this morning that we are presenting for holding 164 doctoral candidates. This is the highest number since the establishment of the college. Having served as the Dean of Postgraduate Studies some years back, my joy knew no limit because of the success of our postgraduate college. I'm glad to report that all the doctoral candidates to be hooded today have met the university requirements of publishing at least two journal articles in high impact category A or B global rating peer review journal. This is a requirement before you can graduate. <laughs> the university needs to know that your work can meet the test of time in the global platform. So that's why it's mandatory that all doctoral students must publish part of their work in category A or B in the global ranking platform of journals. In addition, there were inspiring and commendable remarks across board from external examiners that were invited from all the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria, federal, states, and private universities for oral examination of our doctoral candidates. 
by the grace of the Almighty God, we pledge to sustain and even raise the standard in order to improve on our global ranking. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm also delighted to know that today's occasion is unique in the sense that this will be the first time that the university will be presenting for holding ceremony doctoral candidates in the field of nursing sciences, <laughs> finance, and economics. Having been given approval by the National Universities Commission, as well as the Adventist Accredited Association, the course was clear and we started. And I want to congratulate the Department of Economics, Finance, and Nursing Sciences for their first fruit in the, in the department. In addition, we have among those to be hooded today highly placed personalities in the academia, in the corporate world, in the government circle, and in the judiciary. Among those to be hooded today, we have a high court judge, Central Bank of Nigeria officer, past commissioner for information and strategy, honorable members, former honorable members of the House of Assembly, deputy director of nursing services, even tenured professors, heads of school of nursing, and even chief medical director, among others. This is just to let you know that knowledge has no hand. If a high court judge will still sit in the classroom, that is to show that there is no end to learning, irrespective of where we are in our world. My highly esteemed doctoral graduates, it's just like yesterday that you were enrolled for this program. Glory be to the Almighty God that you didn't procrastinate or get discouraged along the way. I want to be reminded that obt obtaining Doctor of Philosophy certificate is not the end of learning but you will be inducted into a society of scholars with curiosity in learning and researching, as well as the potential to be a game changer in any society you find yourself. Hence, there are still more learning to make and many discoveries to be made. As you celebrate your achievements today, be reminded that it, your certificate is valuable to the extent you use your knowledge to bring about succor and positive change in our society. Dear graduates, also take note of the fact that as you are now qualified as a holder of Doctor of Philosophy degree, you are to collaborate with fellow scholars along the various disciplines in order to continue to act arrive at a cutting edge research. Teamwork is a catch word if you are to make your mark in your profession. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot but specially commend the provost of the postgraduate college, the Delta provost for a lot of work put into this to make today a reality. My appreciation goes to the provost of other schools, deans, postgraduate coordinators, professors, and other lecturers that have contributed immensely to this success story. May the Almighty God perfect everything concerning you and adequately reward you for your sacrifices. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to say that our nation is passing through a challenging phase. The report of the Transparency International for 2022 
Corruption Perception Index revealed that Nigeria scored 24 points out of 100. And with specific reference to Human Development Index for 2022, Nigeria was rated 0.534 out of a scale of 1 to 10. This reveals that Nigeria is not among the nations classified in the high category. Conservatively, 63% of the Nigerians are classified as multidimensional poor based on the National Bureau of Statistics. In addition, more than 33.3% of active youth is unable to find a job, not to mention of those that are on forced labor or abnormally low take on pay. I know that some of those that are to be hooded today are employers of labor, captains of industries. I want to impress upon you that if you have been putting more effort, this is the time to even double it up. Be agents of change. And I want to be guided by the words of E.G. Ellen G. White that, and I quote, the greatest want of the world is the want of men and women who will not be bought or sold. Men and women who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men and women who do not fear to call sin by his right name. Men and women whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole. Men and women who will stand for the right, do the heavens fall. Court closed. I therefore charge you to stand tall in your academic and professional pursuits. Be guided by integrity, accountability, honesty, as well as genuine love for humanity, just like the core value of Papua University embodies. From this moment onward, you are honor bound to boldly, authoritatively, and consistently demonstrate the individual strength of character, learning, and competence that you have acquired so far. Take advantage of the expertise that you have acquired to tackle some of the wide-ranging societal problems. Always be conscious of what shall be your contribution to your alma mater. And remember all those who supported you in your journey so far. Also put into consideration those you will mentor and who will ride on your back to success. Remember, a successful person without a successor is not a successful person. Your future will be greater than now in Jesus' name. In conclusion, I wish to say I'm highly delighted again to join other well-wishers to congratulate you on this auspicious occasion and pray that the benefits and blessings of this attainment shall be permanent in your life. Thank you for listening. Distinguished Vice Chancellor, Principal and Associate Officers of this University, Provosts of various schools, Deans, Professors, and Distinguished Faculty, Esteemed Guests, Proud Parents and Spouses, and the remarkable Zcon graduating class of 2023. We are happy to be here and to extend to you fraternal greetings from the about 120 universities around the world, seven-day Adventist universities around the world. We are here to celebrate you, especially on this important occasion. I want to reiterate that the hooding ceremony marks the transition from student to scholars.
from learners to leaders in your respective fields. You have reached a pinnacle of academic excellence that sets you apart and opens up a world of opportunities. So today, as you don your academic hoops, remember that this symbol of honor signifies not only your achievements, but also your responsibility to use your newfound knowledge for the betterment of society. It is my prayer that you will go and change your society. You will go and make the society a better place. You will go and shine so that all whom you will come in contact with will see you reflecting what Babcock University stands for. May the good Lord bless you and guide you so that you will be able to represent us aright. Thank you very much. Mr. President, sir, and members of the High Table, please permit me to adopt the existing protocols to save time. ICT, please move to slide eight so that we can save some time. Academic regalia tradition narrative. Academic life began in the medieval era and started in the church and in the guilds. And wearing of academic regalia began in Europe between the 11th and the 13th centuries at the very early stages of the universities. According to Hartmann in 1915, the awarding of degrees was started by a pope. Another source indicated that the Guild of the Master of Arts was the teaching guild while the bachelor was the apprentice of the master. The dress was the outward sign of privilege and responsibility. At that time, both the students and their teachers wore the kind of dresses worn by clerics, that's priests. And I guess the reason was that in most cases, scholars at that time would have gone through training to become others, made some vows, and would have been tonsured. That is, they would, they, are, they would have had some shaved patch on the crown of their head. And they wore long gowns, perhaps for warmth. Hoods were worn then to cover the tonsured head, but later were replaced by skull caps. As far back as 1321, in Coimbra University in Portugal, founded in 1290, all doctors, licentiates, and bachelors were required to wear gowns. By the second half of the 14th century in England, some colleges discouraged excesses in dressing and required the wearing of long gowns as well. Oxford and Cambridge universities were the first, during the time of King Henry VIII, to lay down some specifications on academic dresses and ensure that the universities controlled every detail of it. Assignment of colors to discipline was developed and only standardized in the US later in the 19th century. For example, White, from trimmings of Oxford and Cambridge, represented arts and letters. Red, one of the colors of the church, was for theology. Green, taken from medieval herbs, signified medicine. Golden yellow symbolized sciences because of the wealth of knowledge. While olive symbolized pharmacy, just to mention a few. European colleges and universities have their varieties in colors and specifications. However, American colleges and universities have stipulations that all their schools must follow. Gardner Cottrell Leonard of Albany, New York, contributed significantly to that development in 1887. 
After that, there were several revisions that regulated the material, the cut, the style of the gown, and the colors for different fields. In 1986, the committee updated the code and added a sentence to clarify the use of color dark blue for the PhD. Academic gowns come in different designs and colors, as you can see today, and the sleeves reflect the degree. Most gowns are black, but many universities use gowns of other colors like Babcock University. The size and complexity of the hoods also reflect the degree. And the cap, called mortarboard, are different in shapes, colors, and sizes, depending upon the university. Nigerian universities and universities in other countries also have their varieties in colors and specifications. Evidence of this short presentation is here with us this morning. The regalia each of us has on shows the university we obtained our degrees from. Even though in many cases, the principal officers of the institutions also have their um, gowns for ceremonial gowns. Well, while I congratulate you on your attainment of this PhD degree, let me remind you that it is temporal and perishable. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 to 27, Paul states the following. Now, everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. However, they do it to receive a perishable crown. For we, an imperishable one. Paul continues, Therefore, I do not run like one who runs aimlessly, or box like one who beats the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control, so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. With this reminder, ladies and gentlemen, graduates of today, May I invite you to consider the imperishable crown, which is available for us free of charge. Let us all strive to get that crown that will last forever. And that is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Congratulations. May I request the first 12 candidates to come to the Basic Medical Sciences, School of Computing and Engineering Science, School of Education and Humanity, and some from School of Law and Security Studies. As the final stage, their citation should be moving on and then we have their supervisors come up shortly once the candidates are fully found. I will say it's top simplicity. And that is the test of all those full of smiles. I never saw somebody who all her life is full of smiles until I did not know that. I'm referring to the Director of Research, Innovation and International Cooperation of the University of Calgary, Professor Grace Hyde, to step forward to handle the coordination of the cutting of this cake to celebrate this very wonderful view. And I'm done.
buy now. Professor Robert Sussei Matsu, the Chancellor and President, West Central Division of Seventh day Adventist Church, acknowledge you. Uh, Professor Adimola Tyron, the President and Vice Chancellor of Bangkok University, older principal officers of the university, senate members, faculty members, other non-academic staff, we are highnesses that are, we are present, my seniors as a distinguished graduates being hooded today. I call you my seniors because uh, we stop master's men. Since we've gone ahead now, uh, we have become our seniors. So, though I don't have a heart to doff, so I bow my head to salute your courage. More importantly, uh, the families of graduates that are here, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be standing before you this morning uh, for an August occasion like this. Let me express the apologies of His Excellency Prince Dr. Dr. Abiodu MFR for not being able to make it here today. If he had made it, uh, it would have been on the same level and same pedestal as those who are graduating today. As you are all aware, Backup is one of the first three private universities to be granted recognition in Nigeria. These initiated the birth of entrepreneurial education in Nigeria. And I'm happy to say that ever since its establishment in 1999, Babcock University has continued to be, to maintain its trailblazing position in the provision of quality tertiary education. This sentinel of learning has continued to break new frontiers in the areas of academics, especially now, and in the production of qualified manpower, not just for sustenance of development in the United States, but as a source of tool and output for Nigeria as a whole. Right now, we have seen on social media the accolades that ex graduates of Macroff University are gathering all over the world. And for that, I need to put a big salute to the organizers and the lecturers there with me. Let me say that today, Ogun State is called 
the education capital of Nigeria. Of course, we are, we are capital, we are, we are the education capital of Nigeria. You also agree with me that we are the religious capital of Nigeria, because all the faith-based organizations of repute are based in Ogo State, whether it's in Bangkok, whether it's Redeem, whether it is Mountain of Fire, whether it is uh, Nasfat, whether it's everybody does us to be in Ogo State. But I want to say that to be the education capital of Nigeria, institutions like Bangkok has been part and parcel and a critical part of installing us and helping us to maintain that status. For that, I'd like you all to give yourself a round of applause. My charge today is that we shouldn't be the education capital of Nigeria only, but we should be the education excellence capital of West Africa, and then we take it from there. I want to congratulate the Board of Trustees and Governing Council, Management, College of Postgraduate Studies, staff, and the entire university community for yet another successful listing of this 11th coding ceremony, doctoral coding ceremony. In the same vein, I congratulate our doctoral graduating students that was that has been included. I wish to especially congratulate you on this landmark achievement, as today marks another significant milestone in your academic journey, and as you stand on the precipice of a new chapter in your life. I pray that the God Almighty will grant you the wisdom to live through the new responsibilities that you have just acquired. Let's not forget for, some, for all of you who are being hooded today, who have been hooded today, the invaluable support system that you have enjoyed to bring you to this level. You must constantly appreciate God who preserved your life for this moment. You must appreciate your families and friends, mentors, and the academic community who have been pillars of strength, offering guidance, encouragement, and a shoulder to lean on when the going got tough. I'm not in the best position to give you this advice, but the advice is not just for you, it's also for me as well. You must appreciate all those with whom your paths have crossed and all those who believed in you. These, their wavering support must be acknowledged and cherished as we celebrate this moment of triumph. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it may interest you to know that the list of candidates that have been here today reflects areas of human capacity that is needed for the continued development of our society. There has been a lot of drain on our intellectual capacity. But with this, what I have seen today and the number that has come out today, maybe these drains have become like uh, export commodities and we are becoming an exchange for the world to see. I currently, uh, before I came into government, I was part of the board of uh, Redmington Medical Hospital. And the rate at which medical professionals are yearning to come back to Nigeria it shows that there is something here that attracts everybody back home. There is, there is a resonating uh, uh, need for people who have gone out to go. So let them go acquire all the additional international skills and then the bed must come home to use. I want to challenge all our learners to be more focused. The certificate you have earned today imposes on you greater responsibilities in the society, not just for your family, but also for the institution that has given you so much. Throughout your years of rigorous study, you have demonstrated a moving dedication, perseverance, and a thirst of knowledge. Therefore, it is my belief that your pursuit of excellence has not only enriched your own lives, but has also contributed to the advancement of our, in your respective field. As you embark on your new endeavors, whether in academia, industry, or beyond, 
Remember that the pursuit of knowledge is a lifelong commitment. Knowledge, we are told in the Bible, that there is knowledge, there is wisdom, and there is understanding. And because this is a faith-based institution, I think the import of what I'm saying, what you have just done today is knowledge. What you need is wisdom and understanding. And I pray to Almighty God to give you the wisdom and understanding to apply the knowledge that you have just acquired. We expect you to go back and improve on your efficiency and effectiveness for the greater good of humanity. That is the only time you can now prove to us that truly you earn a, P a PhD. Truly that the PhD is also for background. But I miss your professional pursuits. Do not forget the importance of balancing and taking care of your well-being. Like I said, I will not be the best person to advise on that. So this advice is for you as well as for me. You must continually do a work-life balance for us to come out as a total entity. And I'm sure that that will have been part of the curriculum that you have taken part, taken while you are undergoing this study. More importantly, I would like to talk to you about entrepreneurship. This is the hallmark of a man standing by himself. You have garnered a lot of knowledge. You have seen, you've been to the east, you've been to the west, you've been to the north, and you've visited the south. But what you make out of it lies in your hand. And I think that I'm, I'm, I'm aware that all universities are enjoined to teach entrepreneurship in all classes. It would be nice to look at you guys five, ten years down the line and let us see how many of you can say, look, I have at least one person that I'm employing to come and understudy me. Remember, your, your brilliance extends beyond your academic achievements. It lies in your ability to lead meaningfully meaningful and fulfilling lives. And also remember the words of Nelson Mandela who said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. On behalf of our amiable governor, His Excellency Prince Dr. Dakwa Biodun, I want to reassure you all that this administration will continue to support all our educational institutions as education remains one of the key pillars of this administration's ISEA agenda. Prince Dr. Dakwa Biodun's administration will continue to be committed to the continued development of the education sector, especially our tertiary institutions, whether it is owned by government or private organizations. In return, it is also expected that all our higher institutions will continue to collaborate with the state government in the development agenda for the continued development of the state and creating increasing prosperity for the people. I have to say that in the past, when even the state had had challenges, I'd like to thank the Vice Chancellor for coming to the aid of the state to support us, especially during the COVID era. We had to rely on the expertise of Bangkok University to support that we're doing. Please help me give him another round of applause. Thank you very much. His Excellency had already communicated that to you, but I think that at this time I should also mention it because I was part and part of the process. I want to say a big thank you. This is the kind of examples that the state expects of us as responsible citizens and as responsible institutions. In, re in Ogun State, for example, we cannot have this large number of higher institutions in the state and also produce this quite number of PhD graduates yearly, and yes, we're still lacking in certain specialties in our various sectors or in the various sectors of our economy. Ogun State is listed as the third most viable state in Nigeria after Lagos and River State. So the responsibility to produce quality personnel, quality people, lies on higher institutions like you and we'll be looking forward to you and God, I believe, will help you. Therefore, I would like to enjoin all our higher institutions 
of learning to recognize their comparative advantage in their collaboration with the state government. No doubt the need for human capital development to sustain our economic development. You will all agree with me that these graduates, graduate expert knowledge is needed in our various sectors of our economy, such as infrastructure, agriculture, technology. And I'm looking at all sorts of PhDs in uh, robotics, in psychotherapy, me medical, I mean, very fanciful and very special areas. Um, I'm going to have to take my dictionary with your uh, manuscripts and look at who and who deserves um, attention from the state. And as I end this address, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you on this momentous day as you step into the next chapter of your lives, may you continue to learn, may you continue to grow, may you continue to inspire others with your brilliance, embrace diversity, seek out new perspectives, and be agents of positive change. Your collective knowledge has the power, has the power to shape a brighter future for us all. Once again, let me congratulate the Board of Trustees, the Governing Council, Management, College of Postgraduate Studies, and the entire university community and all those who have in one way or the other contributed to the successful hosting of this event. I thank you all for listening and God bless. Thank you very much. God bless. Sorry, gentlemen, uh, courtesy demands that I make this announcement. Two of, the, um, two of the people being hooded today actually work in my private company. So you see that uh, I have a big challenge on my hand. How the Oga will be talking and how we will understand the PhD is talking. But God, God is going to help us. I'd like to use this opportunity to recognize the presence of the Chancellor at LAK University, Elder Dr. I.C. Ebuta. Please, can you stand for recognition, please? Thank you very much, sir, for coming. We really appreciate your presence. Thank you. This undoubtedly is a landmark achievement and for the families of our PhD graduates of the day, we really appreciate you for coming to rejoice with us and for being part of this celebratory endeavor. We thank you very, very much. And we'd like to once again uh, congratulate all of you who have been huded. It marks another chapter of your academic life, of your profession as distinguished academics and scholars in the various fields where you have conducted your own research. And we are very, very excited that we have you as products of this great institution. We once again say we rejoice with you and forever we will remember this day, that this day came and it was. And you were here and remain a part of the story of success of Babcock University. And that when you read when you talk about your story, when you talk about your education career, when you start from the primary school or nursery school and you get to the university level, Babcock University remains, or we remain, will be one of the names of the institution that you will mention 
in your story book of life. So we very much appreciate the enormity of this event and the path that you have chosen for yourself. And we have no doubt whatsoever that you will always excel wherever you go. And as we wait for the next item on, on, the, on the program booklet, which is that the families of the graduates are here, and I want to say a word of thank you to the university. And on behalf, to speak on behalf of the families here represented, I'd like to invite for the family presentations, Professor Paul. Yes, please. Professor Paul C. Ananaba, S-A-N. Where is he? Professor, oh, OK, he's over here. Thank you very much. Please, let's appreciate him and make him feel welcome. Let me begin by appreciating um, the university and asking that I be allowed to stand on the existing protocol. I'm aware that um, if you are too massively built, you shouldn't be allowed to stand on an existing protocol because your weight may break the protocol. Um, I'm sure the university will allow me to stand on the protocol. It won't do any harm to the university. Uh, let me, I've actually done a four-page uh, speech on behalf of families, but I am not going to read, uh, read it, whatever it is. I'm sure you can assess it from the university. But I, I want to say that I was pleasantly surprised when I was asked to speak on behalf of the families. And um, I want to affirm that I have the consent of the families represented in this wedding ceremony to speak. So whatever I say is not just for myself, but on behalf of the families. Just to say that I, I hooded in this university in 2016 and 2022. And today, my wife is part of those who have just hooded. So I want to give God the glory uh, that that could come. Simply to also say that Babcock University is God's agent of change, agent of development. I articulated all the reasons in the presentation. And also to say that those of us who are privileged to have been part of this student ceremony, you know, very few universities practice this student ceremony. And it's an, uh, an act of excellence. It, it Max Babco puts it in the picture of global institutions who understand the need for wooden ceremonies. So I, I want to say that Babcock has equipped every one of you that have graduated or that will be, uh, that have been hooded and will go for convocation on Sunday. Do not live here without advertising, properly representing the Babcock brand. Faith-based institution, an institution that you know when you graduate from the day you join. That is a rare uh, level of achievement. On behalf of the families, we appreciate all the lecturers, all the professors, the university administration for giving us quality and extending it to uh, members of our families. I want to close by saying that 
it is not only good to come and take a hood or a degree and go away. And confer with my family and we believe that we should also give back to society and give back to the school. So, the consent of the Chancellor, the Vice Chancellor and the Pro Chancellors, my family is willing to set up an endowment fund for postgraduate studies. I, we have put down a down payment to the university and we believe that there will be a buy-in from the university and there will be a buy-in from men and women of goodwill. There are people who would have wooded today, but because of financial reasons, they couldn't do it. We shouldn't allow that to continue. If you are one of such persons and you are in the audience, you will feel a bit uh, sad. We must clean those tears and we must march on. So the details will be worked out by the university administration. We believe that every year more people will be hooded because of that fund. And finally, I want to say that, that we need to live also as people who have graduated with doctoral degrees and create jobs where there is none. I'm aware that this school, when you pass through Babcock, you are just not an intellectual. You have gone through a holistic training. Please let that um, come to uh, the advantage of everyone. I say that Babcock has found each and every one of you worthy in character and in learning. Nigeria is in difficulty. And you know what's going on in West Africa. We are now the headquarters of all kinds of troubles. You are the agents that will change that because you have been equipped to make the change. I want to say that Nigeria is waiting, Africa is smiling, and the world is beckoning on you. Go out and make real the saying that the future is Babcock. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Now to respond on behalf of the graduates to the glitz, the glamour, the razzmatazz, the sazi, the suzy of the excitement of the hooding ceremony that has just taken place here, I'd like to invite the Vice President of the Zakon Graduating Class of 2023, Dr. Christian Asonye. Grace Zakon! Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Asoye Christian. On behalf of the Zircon graduating class of 2023, I wish to thank the President Vice Chancellor, Professor Ademola S. Tyre, the Senior Vice President Academics, Professor Philemon O. Amanze, the Senior Vice President Management Services, Professor Yakub Aliso, the Provost of the College of Postgraduate Studies, the Vice President for Financial Administration, Dr. Folan Shua Kondi, the Vice President for Student Development, Dr. Sunday Audu, the Registrar, Professor Jonathan Wosu, and all other associates, Vice Presidents present here. We want to thank you for all your support, your words of encouragement, and all that you have put in place for this program to be a huge success this morning. 
We also want to thank the provost, the College of Progressive Studies, Professor Ayodiji D. Aino, and all the provosts present here. The Deputy Provost, Dr. Olutayo Shokumbi, we want to thank you very, very much. I know my colleagues, you bear with me that this man is an Iroko tree. We also want to appreciate all deans of schools present here, head of department, faculty and staff of our soon-to-be alma mater, Babcock Universities. We want to appreciate all families present here, friends, our supervisors for their guidance, oversight, leadership, and direction to ensure that we have what is being celebrated here today. Thank you all. We also, also want to thank our Lord, temporal and spiritual, all invited guests here, gentlemen of the press, and all the distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for all that you have done towards the success of this program. I also want to especially appreciate our sponsors, Dr. Ajik Emmanuel and Pastor Dr. Theodore Dixon for their support thus far. We want to sincerely thank our spouses, parents, children, and family members for their understanding, love, and sacrifice. It is indeed my honor and privilege to present this little speech of mine on behalf of the Zakon postgraduate class of 2023 as the vice president. We are indeed a special class. The journey we embarked on some years ago was the journey of courage and faith. We had our doubts and skepticism, but we started anyway. We have climbed mountains, swam rivers, and jumped valleys, but we have carried on, still by faith of God. We held fast, we never gave up, even when we had some bad grades. Many times we were rejected or got an outright no for our request. We pressed harder and became stronger with our scars, resilience, and perseverance. Today, we have demonstrated that we have fought a good fight. Great seconds. Today is for celebration. So let us celebrate. Let us give thanks and know that we have come this far just by God's grace. An occasion like this is an exciting one and thought-provoking event. It should be the doctoral graduate ref it should make the doctoral graduate reflect upon the past accomplishment and to map out a course of action not only for ourselves or for our immediate family, but for a long future to come and every other event that will follow henceforth. Therefore, bagging a doctor of philosophy degree in any field should not be seen as an end in itself, but a means to an end. The present social economic situation of our country presents challenges that are in no small measure require citadels of higher learning to develop human capital with appropriate disposition for selfless service. At a time like this, graduates are expected to prefer pragmatic solutions to national development. This is therefore my charge, not only for the graduates of today, but also for those distinguished audience. So rise up, brace up, for the future is bright. We need to leave an enduring legacy for our generation yet unborn. This philosophy should begin with the Zircons. We must uphold professionalism and ethics to the highest esteem and uphold the culture of excellence handed to us by Babcock University. As Babcock ambassadors, we must remain relevant 
because we are the change agent that will bring a better society. Before we continue with this felicitation, let me specially congratulate the entire university community and particularly the College of Postgraduate Studies. Their hard work produced this set of graduates, which I am in no doubt um, proud of their accomplishment. Above all, we thank the Almighty God for His grace and for making today possible in spite of all odds. Once again, I thank you all and congratulations to the 2023 Zycons. Great Zycons! Thank you very much, sir. Well done, Dr. Asonye. The next item we are going to take is the cutting of the cake to celebrate this event. And I'd like to invite uh, someone who symbolizes impeccable simplicity. And I would say it's just simplicity. And that is the person who always full of smiles. I never saw somebody who all her life is full of smiles until I came across her. I'm referring to the Director of Research, Innovation, and International Cooperation of this university, Dr. Gra Professor Grace Tyre, to step forward to handle the coordination of the cutting of this cake to celebrate these very wonderful people. Ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to invite the platform committee to come here. I will also want the CPGS management to join the president of the graduating class and the sponsors. <laughs> And sponsors, please. Sponsors, please. So we are going to cut this cake by spelling the class name, Zakon. We'll spell and then pronounce it together, and that's when we'll cut. So please, ladies and gentlemen, give me a Z. I, I R, R, C, O, N, and that's what? Zacon. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Please, let's be quiet as I invite the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Management Services, Professor Jacob Haliso, for the closing remarks and announcements. Professor. Chancellor, standing on the existing protocol, very brief remarks. This is the 12th uh, wooden ceremony that is almost uh, getting concluded. 12 years back, in 2012, we had 
first hooding ceremony of 12 PhDs. 12 years later, today we are having 164 PhDs. Please give yourselves a round of applause. When we started in 2012, no Nigerian university, no Nigerian university had done or experienced any form of hooding ceremony. As soon as Babcock University started this beautiful program, universities across the country, from federal to state, from state to private, they all are doing. Babcock keeps on leading. Uh, Professor Ademola Estayo, thank you for your leadership, sir. The deans and heads of departments, the supervisors, thank you for your time and the sacrifice. The provost of postgraduate college and the PG management staff, because the VC has been there, and I was also there, and I know what it is. Thank you for producing these wonderful men and women. I just want to say, wherever you go, please represent Babcock University. The holistic education that we have received since we came to this school, to this time, on Sunday, of course, the chancellor will um, issue out your degrees as you will be stepping out of the gates of Babcock University. You are going out, Babcock University imprinted in your hearts that wherever you go, wherever you will be, do not forget your alma mater. Having said that, since our attention rate is dropping, I don't want to take any more time. But let me just do a small marketing that our application forms are out. BUCPGS.college is the portal for applications, applicants to apply into postgraduate studies, and babcock.edu dot ng babcock dot edu dot ng is for the undergraduate application forms if we have done well and we have mentored and molded your character and you want your children to be here then that is the website of the university. So we want to thank the sponsors. We want to thank all well-wishers that have graced this great occasion today. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Please permit me to recognize, I've just been told, that we have Dr. Erastos Akimbola in our midst, a foremost banker. <laughs> Wherever you are, we recognize you and we welcome you. Thank you very much for finding time to be here. At this point, I'd like to invite Dr. Sunday Audu, the Vice President Student Development for the closing prayer.
May we all rise on our feet as we take the benediction. Gracious and caring God, our source of light, we ask for your blessings to be upon these doctors in their various disciplines as they go forward. With their academic activities now complete, may they strive toward excellence in all they do. With the applause quieting down as they go out, may they celebrate and lift up those around them. With the speeches given here and concluded, may their voices rise up to pronounce peace and justice in the world. With the fanfare season, may they find bliss in future endeavors and adventures. With advanced degrees in their pockets now and impeccable credentials in hand, may their achievements grow and enrich their communities. As their careers continue, may they conduct their life's work with exceptional skill and integrity. As they are inspired to go forth, may they set the world on fire. And may your blessings and light shine upon their lives, even as they lighten our darkened world. O oh Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.